Well, we got a nice pretty day today, and I said, what the heck? Let's go ahead and change the oil on the backhoe. It's been needing it for a while, been putting it off, but it's time to do it. So what you're gonna need is for a 580B, this is with Perkins diesel, a 51452 filter, that's a Wix number, a one inch socket, and some oil. I use the 1540, the book, I'm not gonna show you that because I don't wanna get into copyright infringement, but the book recommends for anything above 10 degrees, a 1030. I didn't see any specified diesel 1030 oil, so we're gonna go with 1540. Should be fine. That's what I've been running in it, running in it since I've had it. So, and it's been good for about six years now, seven years. So, we're gonna go ahead and get started. So, the first thing we got to do is crawl under here. Here, and this is on the front. This is for your oil right here. It's a one inch. Go ahead and loosen this up. All right, we got that loosened up. And now, got our oil pan under here. This thing doesn't hold but about five quarts of oil, amazingly. So we're gonna go ahead and let that drain out. So it holds, if you change the filter, it holds five quarts. If you do not change the filter, it holds four, which I'm not sure why anyone would do this and not change the filter, but hey. So we're gonna go ahead and let this drain off a little bit and go on over here to our oil filter. All right, we're over here on the right side of the backhoe and right over here is our filter. And it's pretty simple and easy to get to. It just may not be simple to get broke loose. I may have to go get the wrench. Yep, so let me go grab the oil filter wrench real fast. Well, for whatever reason, I've lost my oil filter wrench. But luckily we can get in here with a big pair of channel lock and break it loose. There we go. All right, so now I'm gonna take this off, let it drain a minute. So I don't drip oil everywhere. All right, I'm gonna take this thing off of here. There we go. So now we just gotta put the new oil filter on. Didn't break out our filter here. And I like these Wix filters. I've had really good luck with them. Used to sell them at the auto parts store I worked at in high school. And nobody ever complained about them, that's for sure. So we got a little bit of clean oil we got out of here. I'm gonna go ahead and lube up this O-ring right here. Just so uh, make sure it doesn't tear whenever we're putting it in. Something I like to do. Normally there's enough oil on there, you ain't gotta worry about it, but I try to be over cautious. All right, so now all we gotta do is reinstall the new oil filter. Give it a good twist on. Make sure you don't cross thread it. And then you just wanna get it good and snug. You don't wanna over tighten it, but you want a good snug fit for sure. There we go. All right, well, I messed up. I didn't think about it. I should have ordered a new gasket for this thing. For the oil plug and it's completely slipped my mind. It's been a while since I've changed it and hadn't really even thought about it. But uh, it's still in decent shape around the edges. The bolt, somebody had slipped a wrench on it previously and I didn't catch it, but it had big old burrs on each corner. So kind of clean those down a little bit. And what I like to use this stuff right here is awesome. It's Permatex Aviation Gasket Maker. And I'll use just a little bit of this all around there. And what I'll do is I'll try to clean the brush off and I'll just brush a little bit on, on the bolt side. And then I'll brush a little bit on, on the gasket side. And I'm supposed to let this stuff set up for about five or 10 minutes. This stuff works wonders. So we've got that. Go ahead and brush a little bit on the gasket here. Leaking all over my hands, but that's okay. Put that on the bolt. And now I'm gonna put some more on this side of the gasket. Just give it a good seal all the way around. And honestly, I've never looked for these. I don't know if auto parts stores sell them or not, but I definitely need to invest in one pretty soon before I do it again. And you really should do this every change, but 
I don't normally do it. I don't normally ever think about it. All right, so we're gonna let that set up for about five or 10 minutes and still drain it out a little bit. We'll go ahead and reinstall the plug. All right, so the gasket maker set up for a few minutes. I'm gonna give that a good wipe down real quick and try to do this fast before it gets coated in oil again. So, it keeps, you see it, it'll just keep kind of coming out. So, put that in there real quick. Good. Now it's got to snug her back down. Trying to keep my head out of the frame here. And you don't want to get this too tight, but it is a big plug, so you want to get it decently snug. That's pretty good right there. All right, so now I just got to put some oil in there. All right, so to fill the oil, I always use a dipstick tube and pull that out of there. Set it out of the way, give me a little funnel, and we're good to go. So I did change filters, so we're gonna put eh, about four and three quarters, four and a half quarts in there, start it up, check the level. And here we go. All right, we're gonna go ahead and install our dipstick and go ahead and crank her up and let her run for just a minute. For a couple minutes and should be circulated through the filter and should be able to check the level now all right so now we're going to go ahead and check the level give it a good wipe down and i don't know if you can see it where's that there it is we are not quite there we're just above about a quarter of the way up to the full mark so need another probably half a quart three quarters of a quart at least so we added her about a half a quart in there. Let's see where we're at. So, on the full mark. All right, right there on the full mark. There we go. So it was right. The manual was correct. Right at five quarts with the filter change. Right at perfect. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and pull our air filter out and check it. And right here, I have two nuts on uh, kind of locked together. So. And it's just spinning on the right side. So what I've got to do is take a wrench on one side and hold it, loosen the other one. So this thing will slide out. All right, so I got the first one off. Got this one loosened up. Of course, the truck comes by. So we're gonna go ahead and take that off. Try not to lose it. Man, almost got it. Come on. There we go. So now somebody's just put a regular old bolt in there. This thing, when I got it, it was, it ran good. It's always ran good, but the wiring and everything on this thing, oh yeah, Lord, it's been a joke. So now, take that ring, get that ring off. And to be honest with you, I haven't checked this in quite a while, so I'm a little bit terrified. So I may be able to do this without lowering the boom now. So there is one end of the housing. Got a big nut here. Hold your filter in place. Man, the sun is not being my friend. Having a hard time getting things to focus this morning. Let's unscrew that. These filters are not cheap at all. They're about 60 bucks, I believe. This one, obviously, I haven't changed it in a while, but it seems like the last one I bought was about $60. I may be wrong a little bit. It may have been 40 or 50 I don't know. But anyway, they're not cheap. So if we can blow this thing out, that's what we're going to do. Actually, yeah, I'm going to have to lower the boom down a little bit here. Yeah, should be just enough 
to get it out. So it's pretty dirty, but nowhere near as bad as I anticipated. So we're gonna get this thing, pump up the air compressor, blow it out real good, put her back in. I think she's got a little more life left in her. So I got the air filter all blown off. It wasn't too bad at all. So then I'm gonna slide that thing back in there. Tighten this wing nut back up. It's good and snug, not spinning or anything, so got that much. Now I'm gonna, well, let me see, I'm gonna blow this cap out, it's pretty nasty too. All right, so this is where it gets a little tricky. Obviously, top's going up, but you can get that in there and get that band back on. It's kind of a pain, but normally it's not too bad. So, just gotta kind of work it around and over. But the hardest part's on the top. You gotta get it lined up on the top right there as well. And then get the bolt back in. So I'm gonna use two hands and go ahead at the top right in there, get it lined up. And then we can put the bolt and tighten everything back up. We got the band on there, just tightening up the nut here. The sun is once again killing me with the glare. So get this one tighten up. I don't know if they're all like this. This one's got a two nuts on there. To, lock it up but I have a feeling that it uh, probably has been changed at some point this thing's old so who knows so I'm gonna lock that one down that other nut down here and sorry I cannot get the can't get an angle on it and not get the sun glare on it so but uh I'm gonna go ahead and get the other nut on here to lock them down and that'll be good to go well in the last video I did of uh changing the uh transmission filter I had quite a few questions and I'm just gonna go over a couple things on this thing so to change or I'm sorry to check the hydraulic fluid for your lifts and your backhoe and everything you're gonna this cap right here is your fill cap at least on mine some may be different but I'm on the uh, left side of the tractor on the upright and these two are reservoirs they're interconnected so pretty much you take this plug out right here I have it loosened up, but I need to get a new plug for this one. It's been pretty much loosened with anything and everything. So, you take this plug out right here. I still didn't get it loosened up. I'm going to get it eventually. So, you loosen this plug. And I don't have it. It's supposed to be in transport position. I don't have it in transport position right now. But, put it in transport position. And loosen this plug right here. And you can see oil coming out. I filled it up not long ago at all. So it's full. And it doesn't pour out when you got it in transport position warmed up. You pretty much add it right up here until it flows out right here. Put that cap back in. Tighten the caps back up. This one up here I don't want to keep too tight. Because I keep it in the shop. But I uh, want to get these tightened back up. And that's how you check your hydraulic fluid. Check your torque tube dipstick. Man, the shadow is killing me. Your torque tube dipstick is right here. I hope you can see him trying to get the shadow out of it and everything. But right here is the torque tube dipstick. And I don't have it warmed up and I don't have enough fuel in it to warm it up and check everything. But uh, I've got to go get some fuel. But right here is your torque tube dipstick for your transmission and then right here is the dipstick for the rear end and this takes the tch hydraulic fluid and this takes a i have to look back in the book i think it's a 8090 or uh 8140 white oil this is more of a gear oil that takes the tch fluid so but that's pretty much everything on this that i'm going to do today i'm going to have to tear into few more things i'm having a couple issues with the uh i think it's rasa injector pump the injector pump is leaking a little bit when it's sitting so i'm having to cut the fluid off every time i park it so that's a project for another day we may rebuild that thing one of these days or i may just buy one that's already been rebuilt but that's pretty much it for this thing so i've had it for about 
I think it's seven years now, six, seven years I've had this thing. I've done a lot of work with it. So I've got here to show you what I've done. Been planning on building a house for a couple of years now. And this property used to be my great grandfather's and we got it for, from uh, my grandparents about seven years ago, six, seven years ago. And this was all woods all up through here. It was all woods, great big giant trees. And I came in and cut them all down and still got a bunch to burn down there and piled up all the top soil right here. But I dug a ton of stumps out of that thing and it's still going strong. A couple of them are the size of a Volkswagen. So it's a good little backhoe. It doesn't quite have the power you'd want for digging big stumps, but hey, it got the job done. I got the lot cleared and maybe one of these days we'll get started on it. So thank you everybody for watching. And if you haven't subscribed, please do for all those who have, thank you so much. And hope this helps somebody out that needs a little more information on these things. And we'll see you next time.